Welcome everybody, welcome to my third live stream everybody, this is my third live stream. If you've been following my channel for a while, I've been uh, doing live stream two times last year and uh, one of my goal before the end of year 2021 is to do another uh, live stream and learn from my uh, experience uh, uh, live streaming uh, last year. All right, all right. Thank you everyone for uh, joining. For those of you who are currently watching, uh, interact with the other viewers right now, please introduce yourself uh, in the YouTube uh, chat window. Tell us, uh, what is your real name? <laughs> yes, I want to know your real name because um, uh, if you just use uh, the YouTube uh, name, sometimes it shows up as a, it just shows up as a uh, username rather than your real name. And also, tell us what city are you currently watching today's live stream? and also the time, the current time in your place, in your time zone, that would be very much appreciated as that will improve my geography, folks. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, I may know a lot about Scrum, but um, I need to improve my uh, geography. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, so, oops, sorry, sorry, that is not it. That was not it. it, it. <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> uh, we've got Liana <laughs> from the backyard. Okay. <laughs> okay, and we got Carlos from Peru. Whoa! I'm wondering what is the time right now in Peru. Uh, Carlos, uh, if you can uh, share with us What's the current time in Peru? That would be really appreciated. Uh, as I said, that would help me improve my uh, geography. <laughs> oh, and we got Kanza here. All right, Kanza, uh, tell us uh, the location. What city are you currently watching today's live stream? And also uh, the time. Yes, the time at your current place. Uh, what is the time at your current place uh, where you're watching uh, today's live stream? Oh, we got Kanza from Indonesia! Yay! <laughs> All right, we've got from Peru so far and Kanza from Indonesia. <laughs> All right, 8 uh, p.m. Okay, I'm wondering what time is it in Indonesia right now. Currently, I am live streaming from Brisbane, Australia, folks. So right now in Brisbane, Australia, it's 11 a.m. 
And uh, I just recently moved to Brisbane. And interestingly, Brisbane is the only uh, city in East Coast Australia that's not on daylight savings. So all of our uh, friends in New South Wales, Victoria, and ACT, uh, they're currently having lunchtime. Hopefully we will we'll get someone from Sydney or Melbourne or Canberra, uh, it would be uh, interesting. And we got Patrick. All right, we got Patrick Yay! from Philippines. All right, I think it's around nine. Yes, nine a.m. So I'm wondering if you're already in the office right now, Patrick. Or um, uh, I know I've been to Manila several times before COVID, and uh, traffic is kind of uh, challenging in. Uh, in several cities in uh, Philippines, mainly in big cities like uh, Manila. <laughs> I hope you're watching to, uh, this not in traffic, but if you are, hopefully you will enjoy today's uh, live stream. All right, all right, all right. Great, great, great. Uh, quite a diverse group, quite a diverse group. All right. Okay, folks, so today's topic, we will be talking about Scrum Team's effectiveness. So we will be talking about uh, Scrum Team's effectiveness. Yes, yes, we will be talking about the Scrum Team's effectiveness. So uh, I would like to tell you the rationale why I want to talk about the Scrum Team's uh, effectiveness. Uh, it's, if you may have noticed in Scrum Guide, there is a line uh, that says that the Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum Team's effectiveness. So Scrum Team's effectiveness is now the Scrum Master's accountability. So uh, ever since the Scrum Guide 2020 was updated, uh, uh, was released, uh, November 2020 last year until today I keep on getting questions mainly from uh, managers <laughs> you may be wondering why managers are interested uh, with this but I keep on getting questions from managers so if the scrum master is accountable for scrum teams effectiveness how do we measure it in the past, I've been uh, quite reluctant um, because, you know, metrics is a double-edged sword. Sometimes it can be used for the wrong reason, but understandably, uh, without metrics, we don't know whether we have improved. Uh, in this case, we don't know whether the Scrum team has become more effective or whether the Scrum master has done an awesome uh, job in the uh, team. So, um, today's uh, will be uh, collaborative. So, today will be collaborative. So, uh, I will be sharing several metrics uh, with you. And I have presented, I have shared these metrics in some teams who are genuinely want to improve. Uh, but I would also like to get feedback and to learn from you. And hopefully you are also uh, learning from other viewers today. I don't know what device are you watching today's live stream. Some of you might be watching from a mobile phone. Some of you might be already in the office or at home watching from uh, TV maybe or a desktop or laptop or uh, iPad, but we will uh, make this uh, collaborative. And today I will be using uh, a tool to present the Scrum Team's effectiveness uh, metrics. So I will be using a tool. I'm not sure if you can read the URL uh, underneath me uh, right now. So the URL is currently underneath me, but if you don't want to type that manually, you can, you can uh, click the link. You can click uh, the link that has shown up. It should show up on your, uh, on the YouTube uh, chat window right now. So if you click that, you should be able to see uh, the screen where I'm presenting. I'm not sure what device you will, you will be watching today's live stream. So um, if you're watching from a mobile phone, uh, the text might be too small. So perhaps it will be easier for you just to access the mirror board uh, that I will be using for today's uh, live stream. All right, all right. And let's see, let's see anyone else here. We've got 
additional viewer we've got Windu another one from Jogja yay welcome Windu Windu from Jogja quite diverse uh, we've got several friends from the other side of the world we've got Carlos from Lima we've got Patrick from Philippines we've got several people from Indonesia from Jakarta and uh, Jogja Welcome folks, welcome, 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 welcome. All right, so <laughs> go back to our mirror board again. So uh, yeah, click the mirror uh, board link that uh, should already show up on the YouTube chat window. Um, I will be presenting from here. All right, so uh, as I said earlier, uh, one of the rationale for me to do uh, today's live stream is to get a feedback, to learn from you also, and uh, also to share uh, what metrics I have been using uh, so far. And the reason is because a lot of managers, mainly the middle to senior level managers, uh, have asked me, you know, if the Scrum Master is accountable for the Scrum Team's effectiveness, how do we uh, measure? Sounds good, but it seems too fuzzy <laughs> according to several managers. So we want like um, tangible uh, measurements. Some managers I have found, some senior managers are quite genuine. Uh, so when I know they are genuine, they're not using the <laughs> metrics for the wrong reason. They're not using it as an, uh, <laughs> as an impetus. Uh, I work. I work with them. I collaborate uh, with them. So if you look at the Scrum Guide now, the Scrum Master has two accountabilities. The first one is establishing Scrum uh, as defined in the Scrum Guide, and the second one is the Scrum Team's uh, effectiveness. Okay, okay. So uh, there are several things that we need to dig down here. Uh, there are several things that we need uh, to dig down, which will be the fundamentals um, of uh, how I come up uh, with the metrics. A lot of these metrics uh, are common sense for a lot of people who have been using Scrum, who understand the Scrum values. Uh, a lot of these metrics are common sense. But before I talk about the metrics, I want to talk about... Uh, the fundamentals that we need to understand first so that we have a shared agreement uh, so that you're not confused um, with the metrics that I came up with. So uh, first, uh, when you look at the Scrum, uh, the Scrum Master accountability, it's the Scrum Team's effectiveness. Now in Scrum Guide 2020, um, we're moving away from you know, us versus them, creating silos, uh, etc. So if you have noticed, uh, developer, uh, development teams are now just called developers because in the past, uh, the product owner seems to create gaps and barriers and walls. Oh, development teams, like they're their own team. I'm the product owner. I'm not part of their team. So a lot of product owners I also found on the field are weaponizing Scrum, uh, using it or misusing it, misusing it for uh, their own uh, advantage. All right. <laughs> yes, a lot of product owners are misusing Scrum for their own uh, advantage. So now uh, the Scrum team is the product owner, Scrum master, and developers. So when we talk about Scrum team's effectiveness, it's this whole three. So they need to work collectively as one uh, unit. And if you look at the Scrum guide, each of these uh, have their own accountabilities. Like the product owner is accountable for the value of the product. The developers are accountable for instilling quality. And Scrum Master, the two that I have just mentioned. So uh, when we talk about Scrum Team's effectiveness, there, may, there must be like an orchestra. All of these three must uh, succeed together. So if the product owner succeed in maximizing value, but uh, the other two are not uh, successful in their own accountability, so as a whole, the Scrum team uh, is not effective, right? So this is what we need to keep in mind throughout today's uh, live stream. So it's a collective, uh, it's a collective one unit. 
So the Scrum team is effective when the product owner, Scrum master, and the developers know their own accountability and doing a, a great job. So sort of like in a sports team, you know? So in a sports team, I like watching soccer. Uh, I mainly like watching soccer. So let's say like the whole team fail. So you can't say, oh, I'm the striker. Uh, I create a lot of goals, even though we fail. But at least as a striker, I scored a lot of goals. So it doesn't really matter if you as a striker scored a lot of goals. If the team, the whole soccer team uh, lost at the end, well, they failed uh, anyway. Okay, so this is what we need uh, to keep in mind. And when we look at the Scrum team's accountability in Scrum Guide, it says that they're accountable for a valuable, useful increment every sprint. So there are three uh, keywords here that I would like to highlight. Value, useful, and every sprint. I think that is kind of difficult. Uh, I think that's kind of uh, challenging, especially uh, the part every sprint. Because uh, as we will see later, a lot of teams I have worked with don't have that consistency. They're not able to continuously deliver valuable, useful increment every sprint. Maybe sometimes once in every uh, blue moon, once in a while, some sprint they don't deliver value. Uh, some sprints they do. So I think that's uh, that's quite tough personally. But this is good. Uh, we should use this as an indicator um, and find out the gaps. What are the gaps for us to get that ideal uh, situation? So uh, this is what we need to keep in mind uh, when Scrum Guide says Scrum Team's effectiveness. It's all of these three. And um, they're effective if they deliver valuable, useful increments every uh, sprint. Now, I have faced a lot of challenge also <laughs> starting from uh, last year until uh, <laughs> until today, whenever I face people from project management uh, background <laughs> because uh, they often tell me, well, this is no difference to project management. Uh, effective? Yeah, deliver on time, on scope, and on budget, right? Because according to dictionary, uh, effective means producing a result that is wanted, that we want. So we want a project that is delivered on time, on scope, and on budget. So how is Scrum different to like waterfall project uh, <laughs> management. So, yeah, <laughs> I've, uh, I've faced a lot of uh, challenges, uh, of mainly from people from project management background who try to twist it. So when Scrum says uh, effective is not meeting that iron triangle, folks, it's not that. So we have to go back to the root of Scrum itself. So when we look at Scrum Guide, Scrum is about achieving product goal. And our product goal is not to deliver on time, on scope, and on budget. Our product goal is to bring impact to our customers and impact to the business. Now, for some people who come from project management background, it takes a while for them to uh, digest uh, this uh, part. Right, because uh, I often say uh, to organizations, to managers, you can deliver on time, on scope, and on budget, but you may not bring in impact. There's a lot of products that are delivered on time, on scope, and on budget, but fail to deliver uh, impact. So in Scrum context, um, you're not effective. So effective means bringing impact, uh, in this case, to customers and also the business, the company that uh, we work for. So Scrum is all about outcomes. It's all about uh, value. And for a shared understanding between us, it's possible that the team deliver less, like less than uh, the initial scope, or maybe they're a bit later, uh, or maybe there's an additional budget uh, needed. I often use the uh, analogy of the movie Titanic. So from project perspective, the movie Titanic was not delivered on time, on scope, and on budget. It was delivered, uh, the schedule for releasing Titanic, it was uh, changed, it was dragged and there was additional budget that was requested by the uh, movie director and I think there was additional scope. So from project perspective, Titanic was not really uh, successful but from product perspective, 
a Titanic is actually very successful. Yes. <laughs> yes, Titanic is a very, uh, from product perspective, is uh, successful. So it's possible that our team deliver less amount of uh, scope or less amount of features or uh, it's possible uh, the time is dragged or additional budget was pumped. But at the end, we need to measure ROI, return on investment. How is the return on investment of the uh, product? Okay, so uh, this is uh, effective uh, means in the context of Scrum. So product mindset, right? So we need to keep a uh, product uh, mindset. Now, um, so uh, from here, we can uh, make a cluster. From here, we can make a cluster. We can make a cluster. Um, so at the end, it's about value. And there is a capability needed to be able to deliver uh, value, right? So that box, that gray box, is what effective means. How capable are we to deliver value? I will go uh, and break down the metrics underneath each of these uh, boxes, the impediments, capability, and value. So if we don't have the capability to uh, consistently deliver valuable increments every single sprint, there must be a root cause behind it. Now we need uh, to measure that also, right? So uh, what are the uh, root cause, what are the impediments, the obstacles for us to continuously deliver uh, releasable, usable increments every sprint? We will go to that uh, later on. Now, a lot of organization, uh, they try to fake it. <laughs> so at the end of the day, uh, if we have metrics, uh, you cannot lie uh, when there are metrics. So I'm not sure if you have seen this kind of model. So I often call it the water scrum fall. <laughs> uh, it's the water scrum fall. Uh, because uh, what a lot of organizations uh, do uh, when they think sprints, when they think sprints is only about development uh, sprints. So the development process is chopped into pieces into uh, several sprints, but the organization still do upfront, big fat UX research, requirements analysis, as you can see on the red bar. And testing is still done uh, at the end for several reasons. Uh, some reasons is, well, we can't trust the <laughs> developer to test. So we still need to do uh, testing at the end uh, anyway. Uh, but if we tie this back to Scrum, like uh, even though uh, the development phase is chopped into sprints, there's no releasable increments, right? So there's no releasable increments because it hasn't been tested. So every sprint, uh, even though it looks uh, quite nice because, oh, now we're using <laughs> sprints. Uh, <laughs> developments are chunked into sprints, but every sprint, it doesn't generate releasable uh, increments. So in this case, in this case, um, it's still not effective yet. So we can start from there, but we shouldn't stop there. Uh, we should continuously pursue, uh, improve our state of agility until we can continuously uh, deliver uh, releasable uh, increments every uh, sprint. So hang on a second, folks. I want to see if we have additional viewers today. Whoa, we got 13 viewers now. We got 13 viewers, folks. All right. We got Pranita uh, from USA. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then we got Emma from uh, Germany. All right, welcome. Wow, this is quite diverse from uh, around the globe. We've got uh, Carlos from Peru, South America. We've got from uh, Europe, Germany, and Pranita from uh, USA, North America. We got several people from Southeast Asia also. Glad to have you here, uh, folks. For those of you who just joined us, for those of you who just joined us, um, you may have noticed I've been presenting from a mirror board. So I've been presenting from a mirror board. 
So there is a link, but if it's um, too challenging for you to type that manually, Right, uh, the link to our mirror board should show up in the, yes, <laughs> now it shows up in uh, the YouTube uh, chat window. Go click uh, that. I don't know where or what device are you using for watching today's uh, live stream. So if you're watching from mobile phone, the text on my presentation might be too small. So perhaps it's easier for you just to access uh, the mirror board directly. Whoa, we got Aussie Zinho. All right, all right, folks. For those of you, for those of you who has uh, joined us, not only uh, tell us about your name, your real name, uh, not that YouTube <laughs> username, uh, your real name, the city. Uh, the town where you're watching today's live stream, and also, like what I have told earlier, uh, tell me the time, the time uh, currently in your uh, time zone. That would help me improve my geography, yes. <laughs> yes, I may know about Scrum, but my geography, it's one of the worst subjects. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, my mark for geography was really bad. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's see, let's see. All right. So if everyone can tell us not only the location, we got Krishna also. Uh, also tell us uh, the time, the time at your place right now. Wow, cool. This is quite diverse. We got 11 people currently uh, joining. So for those of you who has joined, you can click the link to the mirror board. Wow, 655! Oh my goodness! Wow, that is so awesome! Oh, that must be like some determin... Oh, 650! <laughs> that must be like some determination uh, to <laughs> join us very early in the morning. Wow, we got Ayuk, Ezekiel, 725 p.m. It's night time. It should be dinner time uh, with your family or with your friends. Ayuk. But thank you, everyone. Thank you uh, for your determination. Uh, joining us really awesome. Really awesome. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to our uh, mirror board. Let's get back to our mirror board. Yes, uh, for those of you who just joined, uh, click uh, the link to the mirror board, uh, just in case you want to see. Uh, for those of you who just uh, joined, don't worry, with the YouTube live stream, you can always uh, go back because after I end today's live stream, the recorded version will automatically be available on my uh, channel. All right, so where were we up to? Okay, the water scrum fall. Now, a lot of organizations try to fake it. Um, uh, some organization may start from here, and oftentimes I said, okay, you can start from there, the water scrum fall, but don't stop, right? Because scrum is about continuous improvement. Uh, but Scrum is also about starting from we are now. So we can start from an unideal state. I'm not sure even uh, if unideal is um, <laughs> even a word. So we can start from an I an uh, unideal. <laughs> wrong with me sorry folks it's around 11 right now in uh, brisbane i think i may need uh, coffee so we may start from not so ideal yes not so ideal uh, state but we shouldn't stop there so a lot of organization may start from here they only chop the uh, development phase into uh, sprints but when you put metrics into it uh, there is no releasable, usable metrics um, as the result of that uh, sprint. So the releasable uh, increments are only uh, achieved at the end of the whole project lifecycle. Now, from here, we can see that value might be realized too late, right? It really depends on how long is the whole project life cycle uh, is. We don't know what's going to happen by that time, right? Market may, may have already changed. And during the pandemic, um, I have learned a lot of uh, lessons about, you know, being agile, about being more competitive, about being more adaptive. By that time, things may uh be irrelevant. Whatever we have done might be irrelevant uh, against the current market uh, situation, right? But we can start uh, from there. So as a shared understanding, uh, Scrum, uh, 
because Scrum requires a releasable usable increment every sprint, at least every sprint there is a releasable uh, increment. So at least every sprint there is a releasable uh, increment, right? Um, so in the very first few sprints, there might be only several releasable increments. Maybe there's only like uh, the user profile page or the uh, login page, uh, etc. Now in Scrum, that is uh, good enough. So in Scrum, that is uh, good. Now we also need to have a shared understanding. Uh, Scrum requires a releasable usable increments, but Scrum doesn't require you to release every sprint. But of course, if you can release every sprint, that will make you more competitive in the market, but we'll talk about that later. Scrum requires a releasable usable increments every sprint, but Scrum doesn't require you to release every sprint, right? Um, but by having a releasable usable increments every sprint, we will be more uh, competitive uh, in the market. So at least this is what we like uh, to see. Now we also need to have a shared understanding uh, about this. When uh, Scrum said that there must be releasable increment, it doesn't mean, uh, this is some of the misperception that I commonly see in the market. So when people say, oh, there must be releasable increments, well, that's no different to Waterfall. So the developers, they have to complete all of the sprint backlog that they have uh, broken down, that they have decomposed during sprint planning, right? So that's no different. So Scrum is basically just a mini uh, Waterfall, right? <laughs> No, 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 not like that. Scrum <laughs> is not a mini uh, waterfall. So having a releasable increment doesn't mean that the developers have to complete all of the sprint backlog that they have to compose during uh, sprint planning, right? It's possible that they deliver less. So uh, as you can see on my screen right now, so it's possible during sprint planning, the team plan five, but then at the end of the uh, sprint, they only deliver three uh, product backlog items. But those three product backlog items is in a usable, releasable uh, state. So in that case, even though they deliver less than planned, the Scrum team is actually already effective and successful. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, and uh, also, uh, another thing that we have to keep in mind, a lot of people uh, map like uh, product backlog items to increments. So a lot of people map a one-to-one -one relationship between product backlog items and uh, increments. So that's not necessarily uh, true. So it's possible one increment composed of like two or more product backlog items because Scrum uh, doesn't require the product backlog items to be written or formatted in certain way. So it's possible, let's say in uh, my screen right now, the uh, red increment, it consists of two product backlog items. Maybe product backlog item one is the architecture, right? So to make increment one usable, we need uh, functionalities and the functionalities might be in product backlog item uh, two. But if product backlog item one, which is let's say an architecture, uh, if it stands by itself, it's not usable, right? So it needs like product backlog item two to make it usable. So there is no one-to-one -one relationship between product backlog item and uh, increment. An increment can compose of multiple product backlog items because Scrum never dictate how the product backlog items should be written or formatted. A lot of people think that a product backlog item is a user story. A product backlog item only consists of features or functionalities. Scrum just say that the uh, product backlog item is everything that is needed to be in the uh, product, but Scrum never uh, say uh, how it is uh, formatted. So uh, in the context of Scrum, uh, uh, effective doesn't mean planned equals delivered. Now, a lot of people coming from project management background uh, still find this hard to uh, accept, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are uh, quite. 
disappointed when uh, they hear me uh, say this. So the first metric we should measure to measure the Scrum team's effectiveness, therefore, is how many times a releasable increments is delivered every sprint. Now in Scrum, at minimum, every sprint, there must be one increment, right? There must be one increment. And as we have uh, discussed before, an increment does not have a one-to-one -one relationship with the product backlog item. So minimum, there is uh, one. Uh, and how many releasable increments uh, per sprint? So as I said, this is the minimum and we can uh, create uh, metrics for this. Um, some teams who use like continuous integration or continuous build tools, these are like easily uh, generated. If you're a scrum master, you can work with the developers, with the team, with the uh, product owner. Uh, you can make a dashboard uh, for it. And um, I think I have shared like the EBM dashboard on several of my YouTube uh, videos. So I may share it uh, again on the YouTube uh, chat window. So this is an example. Let's say this is uh, like um, the bar of uh, a sprint. So it's a two week sprint from Monday to the next uh, Friday. So how many times a releasable increments is uh, delivered? Now in Scrum, in uh, Scrum Guide 2020, Scrum Guide 2020 tried to accommodate the DevOps movement because on the other side, a lot of folks from the DevOps uh, space said, oh, Scrum is too traditional. We've gone beyond like just delivering once per sprint. Sprint is just like a mini waterfall. So now there is a, a statement in Scrum that says that multiple increments may be created within a sprint. Now with the understanding that we have discussed before, it's possible on the third day of the sprint, let's say on Wednesday, the team is deliver, uh, able to deliver a, a releasable increment even before the sprint ends, right? Uh, Scrum doesn't require that increment to be released, uh, but this is like uh, another stepping stone, right? So now this Scrum team are moving from that mini uh, waterfall to continuous delivery, uh, improving uh, flow. So if you look at like the whole sprint, uh, there's always like a releasable uh, increments throughout uh, the sprint. But uh, don't stop there. As I said, you may start, uh, you may start uh, from an ideal state, but don't stop there. Continuously improve your state of uh, agility. Another line uh, in Scrum Guide that accommodates DevOps is the sprint review should never be considered to a gate of releasing value. Right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Scrum just requires there's a releasable increment, but uh, you don't have to release it. Uh, move, uh, release it. If you have a releasable increments delivered every sprint, uh, what makes you hesitant to release it, right? So uh, there is a really good talk on YouTube. Um, I asked like a lot of developers to watch it. Uh, it's, it's a presentation from one of the developers at Amazon. If I'm not mistaken, he said that Amazon deliver releasable, uh, they don't call it increments, uh, they call it something else, but uh, there's always something released to production every 11 seconds, like without any uh, downtime. Wow, I mean, like that is really, <laughs> really awesome. I uh, think uh, I've shared with you the uh, link on the, uh, yeah, Amazon release multiple times uh, to production every day. So if you've got releasable uh, increments delivered like throughout the sprint, right, the team has moved away from that um, mini waterfall, um, why not release it? And interestingly, now in uh, Scrum Guide 2020, because the whole Scrum team is accountable for value, uh, the developers can release can release uh, to the production environment. But of course, the product owner is the product owner is part of the team. Uh, the product owner already know, and they already have that kind of uh, agreement. Okay, so uh, these are uh, the metrics. You can gather this easily. If you use like uh, tools, 
these are uh, can be uh, generated uh, easily. So uh, I created this like effectiveness uh, scale, as you can see on my screen right now, uh, starting from not effective. To super effect, I, I couldn't come up with a better uh, term, so I just come up with super uh, effective. So not effective, as we have learned so far, no releasable increment every sprint, right? Uh, there's a lot of models um, uh, that shows uh, the team have no releasable increment. It could be that water scrum fall that we have um, discussed earlier, or there is a, a a professional scrum trainer who used the term staggered sprint, you know, where uh, UX have their own sprint, uh, developers have their own sprint, QA have their own sprints. The point is, if there's no releasable increment every sprint, not effective. But you can start there. Uh, it doesn't mean you should stop trying. <laughs> uh, you can start there, but continuously improve. And I often tell uh, teams, organization, uh, they can leverage the sprint retrospective to level up uh, the game. Now, effective at minimum, there is one releasable increment every sprint. Now, if your teams uh, probably after no releasable increment, sometimes there is a releasable increment uh, in a sprint. In some sprint, there is no releasable increment. Don't stop there, right? Don't be too uh, satisfied. Continuously improve uh, the way uh, you uh, deliver. Uh, effective plus plus. I just came up with that, folks. <laughs> uh, you can came up with your own scale, <laughs> with your own term. Uh, multiple releasable increments every sprint. Uh, even in the middle of the sprint, um, the team may be already practicing a lot of DevOps uh, practices. Uh, and in the middle of the sprint, there's always a releasable increments every sprint. Uh, and you may... Um, you may push further. Now, the next step, I call it like release once every sprint, right? Uh, because some teams have gone beyond just releasing uh, once every sprint. They release multiple uh, times in a sprint. Now, interestingly, uh, throughout 2020, or starting from 2020 until today, uh, a lot of people ask me, so how can I achieve the sprint goal? if we can only get the increment at the end of the sprint. Now, this is like super effective. If the team release multiple times, maybe they're like Amazon <laughs> deliver a release to a production environment every 11 seconds. It's possible that before the sprint review, uh, the sprint goal has already been uh, achieved. So a lot of teams have gone uh, towards this, right? So sprint goal, the sprint goal, in fact, um, is not only like uh, a, a sprint goal, but it's outcome driven, it's outcome focused, and it is achieved in the same sprint because they release, uh, the team release multiple times uh, in a sprint. Now, if you're not there yet, as I said, um, don't stop, continuously, um, continuously improve your state of agility. Now, if your team are not effective yet at that not effective uh, state, there's no releasable increments every sprint, find out the root cause, right? And we can create a metrics for this. Now, we can create a metrics for this. Now, I would like to know, I would like to know from uh, you, I would like to know. All right, so I would like to know from you. So if your team currently uh, are not at that state where they consistently deliver releasable increments, right then on the chat window, what help do you need? You know, from anyone either like uh, from the organization or maybe an external uh, consultant so that your team can deliver at least one, one releasable increment consistently every uh, sprint. Write it down, folks. Write it down. I would like to uh, hear from you. Uh, I would like to uh, hear your uh, challenges or the challenges that your team are facing. If your team are not there yet, not effective, uh, they're not able to deliver at least one increment every sprint consistently, what help uh, do you need to get them uh, there? All right, so let's see. 
Wow, we've got Ngalor Nidor. All right, all right. Because there are several people who has already uh, joined us. All right, I will tell them. I will tell them. Introduce us your real name, Ngalor Ngidur. <laughs> we don't really know what's your real name. We know you're from Bogor, Indonesia. But tell us your real name. Uh, tell us your real name. And most importantly, as I have <laughs> uh, tell the other viewers, tell us uh, the time uh, where you're watching today's live stream so you can help me improve my geography. <laughs> yes. I know a lot about Scrum, but my geography is really bad. Hey, we got Andre. Uh, we got Ngalor Nidur. Who else? Who else on you? We got 12 uh, viewers today. Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Krishna, uh, who said that... Um, okay. Yes, folks. So, uh, as I said... Yes, right down in the YouTube uh, chat window. Uh, what help do you need so your Scrum team can at least deliver a releasable increment consistently, right? Not not every now and then, but consistently. As I said earlier in today's live stream, I personally think that's tough, uh, but it shouldn't stop us from pursuing, uh, from improving, so that we can uh, be at an ideal uh, state. Okay. Hang on, let me show Not, not friends, not friends. Okay, okay. All right, so let's see, let's see. Uh, investment in automation tools according to Krishna. Okay. Uh, OC Jinho, uh, elaborate better sprint goals. Carlos, <laughs> the uh, Scrum team. Uh, oh, all right. So, Carlos, uh, tell us, uh, how do you define <laughs> maturity? So, how do you define uh, maturity? So, we have discussed about effectiveness <laughs> since you came up with uh, another term called uh, maturity. Uh, tell us, how do you actually measure uh, maturity? Anyone else? Anyone else? Scoping. All right, all right, all right. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Yes, uh, everyone, uh, write down what help do you need so your Scrim team can deliver at least a releasable increment consistently every uh, sprint. I would like to learn from you. All right, all right. Oh, need more technical coach, according to Ngalor Nidur. <laughs> he's, he's still uh, call his name. Uh, okay, Idur, Idur, okay. Sometimes technical gap will also quite serious problem to the acceleration. All right, so uh, as you can see on my screen uh, right now, fix uh, the one in the impediments or obstacle box so you can get to the uh, yellow box. And you can create metrics uh, for it. Uh, so a lot of times what I see is what's impeding the team to uh, consistently deliver uh, releasable increments every sprint is they're working on multiple products, multitasking, uh, they're context switching, there's a lot of uh, technical debt in the product, uh, waiting for approvals or agreement from the uh, management. 
uh, and then production incident rate. It comes once every <laughs> a blue moon. And uh, when your teams have to allocate 20% or so for handling production incident, you're actually just covering up problems. So I would suggest that you fix the root cause rather than covering it with a car. I often say it, uh, just allocating 20% or so for handling production issue, you're not fixing the problems. You're just covering the problems. So I often use an analogy. It's like a carpet. Um, so it looks like tidy and clean from the top, but when you lift up the carpet, there's actually a lot of dust underneath, right? So uh, if production incident rates are uh, as a first indicator, if your team during sprint planning have to allocate certain X percent for handling production issue, for handling defects, there's a bigger problem that needs to be fixed. The product might not be robust, uh, the product uh, is flaky, so you might as well fix that first rather than continuously adding rubbish on top of rubbish, right? So adding rubbish on top of rubbish, you just get a lot of rubbish. So uh, fix up the uh, quality issues uh, underneath the uh, product uh, first, right? So by doing that, hopefully you will get uh, this. Uh, the team can um, not only deliver releasable increments once, but uh, multiple times. In and interestingly enough, if the team is practicing DevOps, they're not just delivering releasable increments, they're releasing uh, multiple times, like the case of uh, the team at uh, Amazon. And even better, you want to count how many times, like let's say we have one year and let's say we are using like two week sprints. So that's around 24 sprints in a year. How many times we achieve the sprint goal like within the same sprint? Measure that, right? Uh, that's measurable. That's um, not like a qualitative uh, measurement. So you can uh, measure it. All right. So uh, where do we go uh, from here? So as I said, uh, these are some like visualizations of the metrics of the uh, underlying problems. As I said, some teams, they uh, multitasking. They work on several products. So um, you can create a bar chart. You know, if your team is working on three products at once, so uh, in every sprint, how many um, percent do they work in each uh, product? This is not effective. Some teams are still here. There's a lot of issues. There's a lot of problems why a lot of teams end up in this situation. If you're a scrum master, do uh, something. Help the team to get out of this. Uh, speak to whoever is responsible, to the management, senior management, to help the team get out of this uh, situation because working on multiple products is actually impeding the team to consistently deliver releasable increments every uh, sprint. Uh, besides that, some teams, they may not be working on multiple uh, products. Uh, as I said earlier, some teams might be working on a product that is inherently uh, bad. So you can allocate the uh, composition of the sprint backlog. They undertake every sprint. You know, how many percent are uh, defect fixing? How many percent uh, are for production incidents? And how many percent is for uh, developing new uh, functionalities. As you can see here on my screen right now, uh, the green bars are developing new functionalities. Let's say in every sprint, uh, the team mostly do defect fixing or production incidents, and they only deliver less amount of uh, new functionalities. It's probably really hard for them to get to delivering that uh, releasable increments every uh, sprint. So at the end, at the end, yes, <laughs> All right. So effective means the capability to continuously deliver value. So effective is not about delivering more outputs or delivering completing uh, according to the plan scope. It's not about delivering a lot of features because you can deliver a lot of features, a lot of functionalities that people don't care about. Um, so if you deliver a lot of features, a lot of functionalities that a lot of people don't care about or functionalities that 
ends up not being used frequently when we look at the return on investment of the product is actually not that high. Uh, Scrum actually is about delivering value. So in Scrum, the team may deliver less amount every sprint, but it's consistently uh, valuable. And I think that is what success is um, or effective is all about, right? So uh, these are the um, effective metrics. For some of you who want a starting point, who wants a starting point, I'm going to paste again the uh, EBM uh, dashboard as a starting point. Uh, it, if you click the link on the YouTube chat window that you see, uh, I made that using a Google Spreadsheet, but in real life, of course, you don't manually enter it into Google Spreadsheet. Uh, usually you would use tools like Power BI from Microsoft or Talon, or um, I think there's an open source one called Pentaho. Uh, yeah, so you would actually use those kind of tools and gather the data from multiple data sources and visualize it into one uh, dashboard. A lot of these metrics can be really useful for retrospective. Uh, I have made a video about, you know, upgrade your definition of done. And in that video, I mentioned that, um, you know, if there is no releasable increment every sprint, you know, keep asking, keep nudging the team, keep helping them also uh, be proactive, be helpful. Uh, because if you just keep on asking questions without actually proactively helping them, uh, you might be seen by the developers, as, you know, scrum masters that are uh that are not uh useful uh for them all right okay okay so several value metrics are uh revenue per employee you know uh after we use scrum uh, let's say we deliver uh continuously how is the revenue per employee you know uh if you're not increasing in value so maybe you're not delivering something impactful uh, for the customer and for the business, right? Maybe we're, we need to align on the sprint goals, on the product goals. Maybe we're just blindly moving without having any clear visions or goals. You know, you can measure customer satisfaction gap. You can measure consumer usage index. Uh, this is one of my favorite metrics, and you can use several uh, already made tools. I personally like uh, Amplitude. Uh, a lot of organization, a lot of teams use Google Analytics. Uh, you can uh, customize to visualize which of the functionalities that we actually deliver uh, that's heavily used by our users or our uh, customers. Market share, cash burn rate. Uh, I worked with um, a public company uh, since late last year until um, this year, uh, they're undergoing a heavy agile transformation. And one of, interestingly, one of the most important metric for them because they're a public company is stock price, right? Uh, yes, I do uh, agree in some case, stock price doesn't tell you anything because you can actually game uh, stock price. But I think uh, in many cases, uh, stock price can be a, a good uh, metric. Yes, I do understand in several cases, uh, even stock price is gameable. So if you have the capability to consistently deliver releasable increments, your value should increase, right? Uh, so Agile, Scrum, it's not about moving fast because you can move fast. You can uh, move fast like going to the wrong direction or going over uh, the cliff, right? So if you're going fast uh, over the cliff, uh, that's not really uh, successful. So you want to move fast uh, to the right direction. You want to move fast to the right uh, direction. All right, so that is uh, for today's uh, live stream. Uh, as I uh, said, the Miro board uh, is available for you. Uh, if you want, you can uh, download it, screenshot it. Uh, for those of you who just joined a bit later, uh, you should be able to see the link. Yes, uh, you should be able to see the link to the Miro board. Yes, so, 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 so let's see what we got here all right all right all right so um i will cover several questions here. all right 
got Carlos, how to build mature scrum team. <laughs> um, yes, I think we can have another live stream uh, for this. Uh, I need to provide the rationale uh, first so that uh, we get a good understanding because this is quite broad. So I'm going to put it in my backlog. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Carlos, for the uh, questions. But I'm probably going to do another live stream to answer that questions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Uh, Oh yes, Pranita. Uh, yes, be careful with investing uh, more. Um, avoid calling people as resources because people are not resources, folks. <gasps> oh yes, people are not resources. People <laughs> are people. Uh, don't call them resources because resources, according to the dictionary, it's an it. <laughs> but uh, people, they have soul. They have thoughts. So uh, treat them uh, as people. Adding more people doesn't guarantee that you will deliver more <laughs> value. I think there's somewhere up there, uh, Nalor Nidor said that, uh, or someone said that um, the team is not technically capable, right? So uh, if you add more people, uh, but if they don't know or they don't have technical capability, you might not get a, a lot more value. So be careful with that kind of uh, thinking. Okay, wow, we've got like uh, 17 people joining concurrently. <laughs> wow, awesome. Well, this is an improvement because um, last year when I uh, did a live stream, there was only like five people. So at least that's an improvement uh, for me. <laughs> yes. Yes, an improvement like three folds today. There's 17 people concurrently uh, watching. All right, all right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're right, uh, Pranita. Yes, you cannot actually uh, download the mirror board because. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, maybe I will. Um, download it manually and upload it to my GitHub. And uh, once this live stream is finished, uh, I will put the link to download it from my GitHub on the description uh, section. Okay, okay. So let's hear. Uh, let's hear. Okay, there was uh, quite a lot of metrics, and you got access to the mirror board. You can view some metrics. That's like a, a starting point for you to measure. Uh, your scrum team's effectiveness and what's most important is not just to measure what's most important is to improve right the measurements should help us should give us guidance on what other areas that needs uh improvements so from the metrics that i presented today and looking at the rationale how i came up uh with this i have shared several of these metrics to several clients and several teams who genuinely want to improve uh uh, they like it. They think it's just common sense. And uh, when they're working in a really collaborative, supportive uh, organization, uh, they like it. They're not uh, hesitant with it. Right down in the chat window, um, you know, Scrum starts with the first step, right? Uh, as I said, you may start from not so ideal state. You may start with water, Scrum, fall, uh, where only the development phase uh, that is... Uh, just in, just to give uh, several people uh, context, what's uh, what are Scrum for? Uh, maybe only the developments uh, that are cut off into sprints, but there's still big fat UX research done up front. There's still requirements analysis, business analysis, and there's still like QA, whether that's user acceptance tests, system integration tests at the end, and you only get like you get a bump of uh, increments only at the end of project lifecycle. You can start from there, but don't stop. Continuously improve your uh, state of agility. From uh, the metrics that I have presented, so maybe I show everything here. Yes, uh, there's the impediments metrics, uh, capability metrics, value metrics. Uh, which one would you like to start tracking or make visible and transparent to everyone in the organization? 
I would like to learn from you right down in the uh, YouTube chat window. So uh, improvement starts with the uh, first step. All right. So Carla said that he wants to start measuring customer satisfaction. Yay. And, uh, Yay! Okay. Uh, oh, it's, all right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining. Thank you for joining. So, um, as I said earlier, this will be the basis for my video. I will create a, a video, probably the similar title as uh, this one, uh, How to Measure the Scrum Team's uh, Effectiveness. So uh, I gained a lot from you folks today. I uh, gained a lot of uh, feedbacks. And I will probably do more uh, live stream in the future. There's actually already one in the pipeline. And the next one, probably I'm going to invite uh, a guest. So I'm going to invite a guest. Um, yeah, just, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, click the notification uh, bell so that you know when the next live stream will be uh, scheduled. Uh, my next guest is actually uh, based in Europe. So maybe we will come up with a time zone that is, uh, with a time that is different uh, to today's uh, live stream. So if you're currently watching the recorded version of this live stream, you can still leave a comments in the YouTube comments uh, section and answer the questions that I asked to all of the viewers today in today's uh, live stream. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was quite uh, fun. It was quite uh, fun. And also, and also, yes, if you have noticed, there is a... A dollar icon, uh, a dollar icon from the uh, chat uh, window. You can give a super chat or super thanks. Uh, that would be really appreciated because then I would know whether this live stream, today's live stream, is actually valuable uh, for you. Any amount is appreciated. That is actually one of my measurements, one of my metrics, uh, one of my indicators, uh, so that I know whether I actually deliver value in the past hour uh, to you uh, folks. So if you'd like to give a super thanks or super chat, that would be uh, much appreciated. And um, that's it. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, until then, you can, well, for those of you who are watching the live stream, you probably can't see anything uh, here on my uh, right. But if you're watching the recorded version, until then, watch the other videos on your right and one down there. Subscribe to this uh, channel uh, so that you won't miss my next live stream. Thank you, everyone, for uh, investing your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.